Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm here at CES 2014, and one of the great things about being at CES is I get to finally get hands-on with a lot of gear that I haven't had. It might be already out yet, but it's still on the cutting edge, and I can't wait to see it. So this is a perfect example of that. I'm here with Mark Weir. You're the senior tech manager for digital imaging at yep. Sony, and so you're in charge of one of our favorite lines of digital cameras, Sony's NEX line and now the new A line. Uh, you have the A7 and the A7R here. These are full frame cameras that are super compact. Can you explain to me, for people who might not know what that means, why that's important? Full frame photography gives you all kinds of advantages in terms of shallow depth of field, great low light performance, great dynamic range, but they're usually very large. They've only been available typically in large size, full size digital SLRs. You mentioned that because I have one right here. This is, this is my personal full frame camera, and this is considered a small one made from Canon. We all admit this is, it's a pretty decent camera, but it's pretty bulky and the lens ecosystem is it's pretty big. Sure, the 60s, um, uh, you know, considered a fairly small full frame digital SLR, Sorry. but as, aside from the size and the weight of the body, there's also the size and the weight of the lenses. Because as the image sensor size gets bigger, the lenses get bigger too. So not only do you have a size concern, but you also got some weight. I mean, this is a good two, three, four pound combination. You carry this around all day, you'll know it. So what we've done in the case of the seven is we've created the world's smallest and lightest interchangeable lens digital camera equipped with a full frame image sensor. In the case of the 7, we have a 24 megapixel sensor. In the case of the 7R, a 36 megapixel sensor, complete with an OLED eye level viewfinder and a tilting LCD. Pretty much everything you're going to need in a camera, however, with about half the size and weight. Right, the tilting LCD is something you guys introduced with your NEX line, and NEX, you know, C3 and the 5, we love that, you can tilt all the way down, and then there were OLED uh, viewfinder attachments for those, and that one's just built in now. Now you mentioned the full frame sensor size, I want to show people what that actually means. Um, in a lot of, yeah, so, so can you explain like the different sizes and, and what type sure. of cameras you find these in? So in this, uh, in this display here, we have three different sensor sizes to give you an idea of uh, sensor area. So typically almost every digital SLR, probably 90, 95% of digital SLRs are this size here. We call this APS-C. Uh, we also, uh, you can see this in mirrorless cameras as well. This is um, a good size image sensor, but it's only about two thirds of the size of a piece of 35 millimeter film. Here we have a full frame 35 millimeter sensor, 24 millimeters tall, 36 millimeters wide. And this is exactly the same dimension as traditional 35 millimeter still imaging film. So this sensor is about two and a half times the area of APS-C and increasing the area gives you larger pixels, greater light sensitivity, greater dynamic range, and lower noise. And then the one feature that everybody likes with full frame image sensor, the ability to have beautifully defocused backgrounds so your subject stands out in your photographs. Really shallow depth of field. Um, last year you guys also released the Sony RX1, which was also a full frame sensor camera, but with a fixed lens. And with the A7, A7R now, you have a new ecosystem of E-mount full frame lenses. What's that like right now? What are you guys' plans for that? Well, with the introduction of the A7 and the A7R, we announced five lenses, a 35 millimeter prime, a 55 millimeter prime, a 24 to 70 zoom, a 28 to 70 kit zoom, and a 70 to 200 constant aperture telephoto zoom. Uh, we've delivered uh, three of the lenses already, and we're about to deliver this new lens. This is our latest. This is the 24 to 70 f4 constant aperture Zeiss. And this is a really cool lens, not only because of its compact size, it's remarkably smaller than what you would find in a typical 2470 on a full frame camera. Notice how much smaller it is. But Another thing that really sets it apart from most any other full frame standard zoom is it has optical image stabilization built in. Right. So that's a pretty amazing combination, made the lens smaller and lighter, and by the way, also less expensive. And we also put in optical image stabilization. So this is our 24 to 70 F4 constant aperture Zeiss, and this will be coming to stores in uh, just a few weeks from now. And that's an F4, and obviously a lot of photographers want a wider aperture, you know, bigger fronter element. Are you guys going to release, look at maybe 
primes or zooms that, that go wider? Well, um, right now we're offering a 35 millimeter F2.8. Uh, we have a 55 millimeter F1.8, so we have some wider uh, aperture options as well. We concentrate on F4 constant aperture for the zooms because putting a larger lens on a smaller camera sort of uh, defeats the purpose but we have over 30 A-mount lenses, all of which can be used with this camera uh, with full autofocus as well if people want uh, a wider variety. So our Zeiss 85mm f1.4, our Zeiss 50mm f1.4, our Zeiss 16-35 f2.8, uh, zoom, all of those lenses can be used with this camera. And we have two different adapters uh, to allow it to, uh, to, to happen. So we have a wide variety of lenses, but again, it's important to realize some of the technology that are in these lenses. Um, some of your viewers may wonder, how could we make a lens this size and this weight uh, with full frame coverage? In fact, there were many people who really questioned whether or not we were going to be able to make a full frame E-mount camera because the sensor compared to the lens mount not only is it very close, but the sensor is very, very large for this mount. But we were able to do it with these cameras. Would you, th would you say that's the biggest technological hurdle in getting a compact full-frame camera, is getting the lens ecosystem also compact to match that size? Well, part of, part of it's the lens, and part of it's the optical geometry of the lens, because since the uh, lens mount is so close to the image sensor, you have to manage the, um, the angle of incidence of the uh, what's coming through the lens onto the image sensor to make sure that you have good corner-to-corner -corner sharpness, no shading, no vignetting. It's, it's a little bit more difficult than it might sound. But again, to focus on the lenses, look at this lens. A 24-70 to 70 f4 constant aperture, full-frame coverage with optical image stabilization. I mean, there are no lenses like this. To realize these sorts of lenses, we had to create new optical glass molding techniques because the use of a spherics and very low ED glass um, in these types of lenses is what makes them possible. And shaping the elements and the aspheric surfaces in the way in which we have is what makes lenses like this possible. If you compare that with this 2470, you sort of get what I'm talking about. Obviously, this is an f4 constant aperture, this is an f2.8 constant aperture, but again, this lens is significantly smaller, significantly lighter, and there's built-in optical image stabilization, which is very rare, um, very difficult to do in a wide aperture zoom like this. What do you foresee as the, the big challenges going forward now that you have your interchangeable lens full-frame compact cameras? What, is it going to be the, getting better uh, optical view or digital viewfinder? Uh, what, what's next? Well, there's always improvements we can make. We can improve the focusing system, we can improve um, the shooting speed, we can uh, widen the assortment of lenses. This is only our first step uh, with a full frame E-mount camera. But when we introduced the models, we also announced our lens roadmap. We're going to have 10 lenses within this calendar year, and then we're going to have 15 lenses within 2015. So there'll be a very wide range of lenses for this system. And of course, you can also use any of our existing E-mount lenses directly on the camera. No adapter necessary with an APS-C crop. And it just crops to the 1.5 or 1.6? It, it's a 1.5 crop on this camera. So if you think about it, it's a new system but it's really an evolution of our E-mount cameras that we've uh, introduced back in 2010. And we think that the advantages in size and weight, as well as the image quality that we can realize with our new 36 megapixel sensor, really put together a winning combination that uh, really no other camera can match. It's really an ideal combination for many photographers and gives them image quality in the moment especially for street photography, that no other camera can match. Thank you so much, Mark, for explaining a little bit about Sony's A7 and A7R. I know it's a very exciting camera. Photographers are really interested in it, and I know you guys are trying to build confidence in that lens ecosystem. Well, thank you. We're at CES 2014, looking at exciting new camera, other gear. We'll find more at tested.com. I'm Norm. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.